What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about with everything going down recently inside Destiny 2. There are some new exotics and hidden items that appear to be time gated that we're going to be unlocking soon. Bungie also snuck in the very first tease in well over a year towards the darkness and those giant pyramid ships that are likely the focus of Destiny 3. As well as that the game got an update with a whole bunch of changes, fixes, buffs, nerfs, stuff like that and also of course new content like the stuff with Festival of the Lost. So we're going to round up everything and discuss it all inside this video. Of course if you enjoy it and want to support the channel a like rating helps out a ton and let's get into it so firstly we have to talk about something pretty massive that Bungie tees and that is if you visit the queen in her throne realm this week the triangle ships the pyramids the tetrahedrons whatever you want to call them for the first time in over a year since this cutscene we have another reference to them of course this is the second week the corruption cycle has been during its fullest but this time as well as new dialogue we've also got some changes inside the queen's court you can see this table with holograms mapping out the ships and planning around them so if you don't follow the law you're probably wondering what's the big deal with these triangles why they're so significant essentially these are actually the darkness as in the darkness the main real enemy we haven't seen yet the high fallen cabal vex none of them are actually part of the darkness the hive are kind of close to it but even still the real enemies of the entire destiny franchise is the darkness which are inside these ships in destiny 2 cutscenes it was confirmed that these guys actually caused the collapse we also saw that the traveler awakening to kill ghoul actually woke up these ships and now they're on the way to us as we speak but they are literally across the entire universe so it's going to take a while to get here probably destiny 3 in 2020 so we know there's supposed to be some kind of great war of light and dark this big final battle and this is definitely not going to be a destiny 2 expansion several bungie developers have already said they're working on some kind of big content release for after the annual pass so beyond the three dlcs we're getting i mean it's happened every single year since destiny 1's launch so it's safe to assume again next september there'll be another dlc probably for sabathon and then the following year so september 2020 is probably when destiny 3 would come out so until then bungie going to slowly tease this war against the darkness so talking about the ships they still look very similar to the concept art and the cutscene. so you've got this one enormous main mothership what I assume the leader is, whatever that's going to be, and of course lots of tiny ships around it. Weird thing I noticed, but every single one of these small ships has this one little light inside the middle, whereas the main one, the big ship, has like hundreds if not thousands of these lights, so not sure what it represents, but it's probably not good. I don't think these ships are the actual darkness, because I mean darkness isn't a tangible thing or an enemy, the same way light isn't a real thing, it's just what we use for power. These things most likely just represent the darkness and use it for power, the same way we do with the light. Maybe there's a dark traveler out there somewhere, Maybe Maybe this mothership is that who knows now it's also probably the most i've heard of the traveler in quite a while mara says how she would have destroyed it if it was up to her i have no idea how she has the power or the know-how to destroy the traveler but she says she won't destroy it because it needs to be a balance so pretty much light and dark you can't have one without the other but it also makes me wonder how this war is going to go if technically nobody can win i don't think you can just beat the darkness and just not have it because it needs to be like a yin yang thing to the traveler and of course light i'm interested to know what the queen is actually planning for because i doubt she wants to destroy these ships like she said you need to have both so this war is going to be pretty interesting who knows what's the deal with these pyramid ships but of course comment down below your thoughts and theories what do you think of this stuff so next up let's talk about a whole bunch of mysteries exotics hidden items quest lines locations and even leaked information as well so as i've covered before of course the leaker and on the nine has said that we're going to be getting the thunderlord in this festival event i mean as well as the leaker being reliable this does also make sense in game from things we've seen like teasers and even developers what they said so we're expecting a new exotic heavy machine gun but now with this update we now have another hidden exotic in the exotic heavy category i think we can all agree this is definitely going to be for thunderlord at some point it's going to be a time gated exotic quest now we also know from trailers that bungie have shown off there's supposed to be the quest line for master ives to find his killers avenge him and also get some kind of reward for it again probably a safe bet that this is going to be thunderlord now where this gets interesting is in the latest update with this event they added some new voice lines with amanda holiday talking about you inside the cosmodrome so these files were leaked by someone called dr AU and then somebody posted it called Blank Knight speculated this could be where Thunderlord comes from. This would actually make a lot of sense. The quest line for Thunderlord to hunt Ives killers could actually just be in a small part of the Cosmodrome. Of course a year ago there were audio files in the game of lots of vendors referencing the Cosmodrome and you going back there in Destiny 2. Of course that never happened but also there were audio files talking about Cade's death. Most of us didn't really pay too much attention to that leak or hold much credibility because the idea of Cade 6 dying sounded pretty crazy but the same files that were discussed covered a year ago talking about his death and predicting it also did have mention of the Hellmouth, the Ishtar sink on Venus and Mars and also of course the Cosmodrome. Again these files 
Cosmo added in the latest update with Festival, and of course Amanda, the one talking about the Cosmodrome, is the main vendor for Festival. The connection with this theory is of course the original Thunderlord was shown off dropping inside the Cosmodrome in that first Destiny demo. They killed the captain and Thunderlord was the reward, so this could be a kind of throwback to that original first demo. I mean, they did put part of the Prisoner of Elders arena area into the Warden Strike, so in a similar way, they could just put a part of the Cosmodrome into the EDZ. The two places are pretty close together, and Amanda does say that she used a teleporter to get you in there, so this could all make sense. I definitely don't think the full thing is going to return. We're not going to get the whole Cosmodrome as a new patrol location. That would be way too much work, but I do think just a small part for this one quest. Now, on a related topic, Bungie did actually confirm a Destiny 1 location that is not returning anytime soon, and that is the Dreadnought. A bunch of people noticed that when you join someone during a Titan adventure, you sometimes get the Dreadnought music and also the Saturn Rings loading screen as a backdrop. This then led some people to speculate maybe it's returning, maybe it's going to be in Black Armory or some kind of new location as Dreadnought. And then we did see it during the ending cutscene as the next location. So after Forsaken and the Reef, there's supposed to be something on Saturn, Titan, and the Dreadnought. So it did sound possible, but then DMG from Bungie came out and confirmed it is definitely not happening and not returning. He said regarding players sometimes seeing the wrong load in cinematic when launching activities on Titan, this is a bug, no secrets, no ARG, plan to be fixed in a future update, pardon our dust. And then someone said hype killed and he said don't want the hype train to leave for a destination that doesn't exist. So there you go, it's definitely 100% not returning. Like I always say, when a Bungie dev comes out and shuts down a room or says something is not true, you definitely know it's the truth. They just don't want false rumors spreading around their game and people getting excited for things that aren't actually coming. I mean, a lot more people saw the leak about Black Armory and are now getting excited for Icebreaker and Last Word and Thorn, but no one's shutting those down. But either way, at least we now know that the Dreadnought is not returning anytime soon, according to Bungie. Now, of course, the new addition in this festival event is the activity of the Haunted Forest, which is a spin on the Infinite Forest from the original Mercury DLC. I mean, the mode is pretty simple and self-explanatory, but you basically go through in a linear path clear enemies the further you get the more loot you get. I think the forest in itself is definitely not too interesting. It's pretty similar to the original forest, just dark now and of course shooting enemies. It's pretty similar. The things I do like though are the invincible knights that follow you around. I think those are a lot more interesting and should be I think utilized a lot more. I think it would be cool that if instead of enemies there were just a bunch of these guys roaming around then you have to try and avoid them and just get around them because of course they are invincible and can't take damage. The little mini boss fight arena thing is also pretty cool but I really like the ending section with the chest and the kind of stretch where you fall down from. It's basically a trap where if you step on the wrong part, you get sent down into this pit with this invincible knight again. There's going to be some invisible force field that forces you down and you can't jump out, but there is actually a door on the right side where you can go through and go back up and get the chest if you want. If you don't manage to get out of this pit in time, then your stuff does go to the postmaster from the chest, so not really to worry about losing anything. But the point of this is to do the activity and complete bounties and get fragmented souls as a currency, which you then use to buy the horror story. It's basically the Forsaken Year 2 version of the origin story just brought back, but of course it also also, the main feature is that it's a 600 drop. Doesn't matter what level you are, as long as you get enough fragments, you can get this guaranteed 600 drop, which is going to be massive. So let me know down below in the comment section what do you guys think so far of the event, the Haunted Forest, the loot system. Are you happy with it or you're not too impressed? Now, of course, this week was also pretty big for Destiny in terms of the reset and also the update. So this is the third week of the Corruption Cycle. The curse is during its strongest. This is when the Shattered Throne is, of course, live. It's definitely one of the best sources of high-level gear to get to 600, if you're not there yet, of course, besides doing a raid which requires a lot more people. Also this week of course the Gambit Malfeasance boss is most likely to spawn so still a very small chance but he is actually most likely right now. So in two weeks with the update they're going to increase the odds of this boss spawning and the following week when it's again during the third cycle it's going to be the same chance as any other boss. And then of course PvP wise this week is also the return of Iron Banner with the brand new bounties that all give a bunch more powerful drops. They've also made the bounties a lot easier to actually earn and complete and then on top of that we've got two times the Valor ranking during this entire week as well. So definitely a lot of stuff going on this week and it's pretty nice to see that you've got PvP, PvE and of course Gambit, the hybrid, they've all got new content and new stuff to do. In terms of noteworthy things inside the latest update, a pretty big one is all the bugs to do with Phoenix Protocol, the Word of Radiance, the Healing Rift and also White Nail on the Whisper the Worm Sniper. As you may have noticed, there was a lot of interference between all those items, but now they should mostly be fixed. They've also fixed the Warlock Supernova grenade thing that kills teammates, so you can't do that anymore thankfully. Chaos reached the new 
Warlock Art Super was doing less damage at lower frame rates. So I'm guessing on consoles it's doing a lot less damage, but now it's actually been increased, so you should notice a difference. It has also been reported that the Thousand Voices does the same thing, less damage at low frame rates. So I'm guessing it's going to be fixed at some point, but it wasn't in this update. They finally buffed Scout Rifles back in PvE by 15% of damage, so they have been unbroken and hopefully should be good now. They also nerfed the Fighting Lines damage and the Aim Assist on the Sleeper, so that's kind of a pre-nerf. Of course, the later one is going to be also reducing the ammo in Gambit on the 30th. They did fix the Thousand Voices, sometimes making that ridiculously loud screeching, so that has been fixed, although it was pretty funny. And thankfully, the Cataloger Emblem is no longer going to repeatedly go to your Postmaster all the time, so you can delete it for good now. But I think that is going to do it for today's video. As always, hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, a like rating before you leave is much appreciated. If you don't want to miss out on my future uploads, then of course, make sure you are subscribed and turn on notifications to be the first to watch my brand new videos. If you want to follow my Instagram and Twitter, they're both linked down below in the description. Clicking on this image will take you to another video from me but as always i appreciate you guys and i'll see you all in the next one